Welcome to Atlanta where the players play And we ride on them things like every day That y'all, 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 that y'all. He was about 12, 11, 12. He couldn't go with me when I go to this club, right? So, <laughs> Jones was outside the club, on the street, dancing for this nigga in a truck. <laughs> has been scarred exactly. ever since. It Child, what if I told you that Jermaine Dupri might have a dark side to him that no one ever saw coming? I mean, not only is Jermaine an all-around hit maker, everybody knows he's the genius behind some of the biggest bops in music. But what if I told you that the same mastermind behind the rise of child stars like Criss Cross... The youngest successful rappers in the history of music. How, how old are you, both of you? Both 13. Both 13. And Bow Wow might be pedo. Puff, I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. Yeah, Jermaine Dupri. King of the house, if you ask me, baby. Shh. Hold up. Now I know I got you like, what? No way. Could this hit making kingpin really be hiding a secret that is downright evil? And if this is true, how did this affect the lives of all those kids Jermaine claimed to have spent time mentoring over the years? Well, honey, sit tight, because if you thought Jermaine Dupree's life was all about chart toppers and famous girlfriends, what I'm about to spill will blow your mind. Before diving into the drama, why don't we take a quick look at how Jermaine Dupri even got here. Born on September 23, 1972 in Asheville, Jermaine Dupri Malden, yep, that's his real last name, grew up surrounded by music. Now, you know how they say some folks already have their path all laid out for them since they were kids? Yep, that was our boy Jermaine. His dad, Michael Malden, was a big deal at Columbia Records and Jermaine basically grew up backstage. By the time he was 12, he was already slaying the game as a dancer for the rap group Houdini. Imagine that, 12 and already touring with hip hop legends. Now you actually started out as a, a dancer for Houdini. Um, not a dancer for Houdini, but dancing with Houdini around, you know, being in the vicinity of where they were. You were just dancing on the tour or? Yeah, yeah I was on the tour and I just became like a, a, a good friend of the group. And then everything that they would do, they, they just started including me in it. So what was it like? And you were what, like 13, 14 years huh? old? I was 12. But here's the thing, Jermaine's interest was quickly shifted from dancing to producing. I don't wanna fall, even though I'm not, you know, I haven't really climbed up the ladder yet, but I'm getting there. And by 18, Jermaine was making his own moves. He produced his very first act, a fierce female hip hop trio called Silk Times Leather. And afterwards, he launched the famous Criss Cross after a chance meeting in an Atlanta mall. 20-something years in, almost 30 years in, when, when, since you started. Oh yeah, I was 19 and 17 when Criss Cross came out. I mean, really, it was just like us both coming together in the mall. We asked one of his groups for autograph, and then we just started talking to the producer. It just came from there. Yep, I'm talking about those two cute teenage boys with the backward pants. From here on, it was a straight shot to the top. But girl, behind the scenes, it's just the one you would never believe the jaw-dropping, scandalous stuff going down. Speaking of crisscross, there were rumors that Jermaine's relationship with them was less about mentoring and more about, well, something way appalling. But before getting into all that, why don't we start from the very beginning? In 1991, Jermaine happened to meet 13-year-olds Chris Kelly and Chris Smith at a local mall. And let's just say the producer was immediately intrigued by the boys, especially their fashion looks and the way they carried themselves. But when he asked them if they were big on rapping, the Chris's went, nah, nothing really major. Yeah, I mean, like, around the neighborhood, we would dance and sing a little bit. But, I mean, we really got into it a lot when we met Jermaine Dupri. I when I met them, I said, what do y'all do? Light-skinned Chris said, we just cool. <laughs> Yet, citing their potential, Jermaine decided to take them under his wings. The group released their first album, Totally Crossed Out, in 1992, and when I say it was a hit, the song totally went viral, becoming multi-platinum. 
and the rest was history from there on. But unlike their hit songs and their cool fashion sense, what we really didn't get to see was the downside to being famous at such a very young age. And to make matters worse, these kids were taken from their parents and literally left under the care of Jermaine with zero or no supervision, all in the name of chasing their dreams. Here's the thing though, Crazy rumors only started flying after the unfortunate passing of Chris Kelly in 2013. The messiest part being he passed away from a drug overdose. Unbelievable, right? But that's not all. After his death, some serious stuff started to swirl. It all began with his mom saying the only reason why her child died from addiction was because he was introduced to drugs and substance abuse way too early. I can tell you who he had his first drink with. I can tell you who he's with when he had sex with somebody who put him up to that. You know, everything he did, he thought that he was getting away with something. Things with adults. And I was like, y'all are not helping me out. But, hmm, guess who's on the other side? Nope, not Jermaine. Jada freaking Pinkett. It was confirmed by rapper Daz Dillinger that Chris Kelly and Jada had a romantic relationship together when Chris was just 15 and the actress was 22. You were good friends with Chris Kelly and Chris Ross and Smith? Bro, yeah. First dude I seen, you think Jada Pinkett was, she was entangling Chris Kelly from Chris Cross. Boy, how gross is that? But it doesn't end there. He also alleged that Jada had introduced Chris to drugs. Imagine starting to do drugs at 15. That could only lead to one thing for sure, chaos. But just when we thought the drama was at its peak, apparently it just started. I mean, who could forget the Cat Williams viral video where he called Jermaine the king of pedophiles? Happened in Puff. I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. Yeah, Jermaine Dupree, king of the if you ask me, baby. Shh. Rumors started swirling that the producer molested the boys when they were under his care. A lot of speculation started popping up too, including some speculating that there's a significant reason why Criss Cross wore their pants backwards. But what really had the Twitterverse buzzing was Jermaine's Vlad TV interview. When Chris died, Jermaine expressed how hurt he was, basically saying that Criss Cross were like his kids. But here's the thing, when Jermaine was asked how old Chris was when he died, not only did he not know, his whole body language was weird to say the least. Seriously, how can you not know the age of someone you claimed was your child? Relatively young age, was it 30 something? Yeah, I think so. Did you see that coming at all? Were you guys still in contact? No, I, didn't, I mean, I didn't see that coming. I mean, we had just did the 20th anniversary, so it was like we had just started having a lot much more dialogue about them going on tour and doing other things after the 20th anniversary. People drew attention to the fact that Jermaine and Chris were probably not as close as Jermaine would like us to think. The whole thing was just a whole new level of sus. Now, if you're thinking, hey, that's just speculations, nothing to hold on to for sure, then you just might change your mind after hearing this next scandal. Now, it's no longer news that despite Jermaine stepping up to play the father figure for Bow Wow when he was young, their relationship now is kind of complicated. You know, when you when see you him on the show talking about Brat, he want to do his record without me. Which is funny because the show, like, Pimpin' is my artist from the Franchise Boys. I call Pimpin' to the studio and say, yo, bring some beats to the studio, let's hear what's going on. I made all of this happen, but Bow Wow, you know, he wants to make it seem like he, <laughs> he got this going. But at this end of the day, it's like, I challenge Bow Wow. I say, yo, are y'all going to make records bigger than 2000 version of Bow Wow? Or is this version going gonna to be better than yourself? So that's his thing. He's trying to see if he can outdo, you know, the Chris Brown and Bow Wow, the Omari on the Bow I don't believe it. I, you know, I don't think so. Damn, but. man. <laughs> Seriously, what could have made you so mad that you refused to relate with someone who was like your father figure? Maybe it's just because of incidents like this. Which incident, you ask? Well, Jermaine openly admitted to allowing strippers to dance for Bow Wow when he was just 12. Wild. Even crazier, Jermaine himself admitted that the incident f***ed Bow Wow up. He was about 12, 11, 12. He couldn't go with me when I go to this club, right? So, really, that's the view. Jim was outside the club, on the street, dancing for this nigga in a truck. This has been scarred exactly. ever since. Now, let's not act like Bow Wow was some kind of saint either. The guy has quite a reputation for putting his hands on women. 
His ex-fiance, Erica Mena, alleged that Bow Wow was physically abusing her during the course of their relationship, and she attributed it to his built-up frustration from his past traumas. And although she didn't directly mention what trauma, people speculated that she was talking about him being abused. And that big Puerto Rican chick from Newark, New Jersey, by Broad Street in the projects. You know who I'm talking about. You know what you did with Bow Wow. Why you gonna that little You know he was only 15, 16 when he came up in the How you gonna do that to the man? Now he on BET about to marry a chick. You did him dirty. They also pointed out that the abuse might just explain the reason for his behavior in relationships. Now, while every other celebrity is doing everything they can to steer clear of the Diddy's drama, guess who keeps defending him? Jermaine claimed the whole thing was blown out of proportion and that he doesn't believe it's as serious as the feds make it seem. Some people are saying that the federal government is doing it, ra doing the raid. They must have something on him. Are you, you did anything I, illegal? I don't, I don't think so. Boy, what? Are you kidding? The whole thing got people talking. I mean, why defend Diddy so much if you don't have skeletons in your closet too? Okay, enough of the pedo talk. Let's switch gears and get into the juicy details of Jermaine's love life. Back in the early 2000s, Jermaine Dupri and Janet Jackson were the power couple no one saw coming. I mean, Janet was music royalty and Jermaine was, well, Jermaine, big in the industry, but not exactly the type you think Janet would be dating. JD ends up with Janet <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> That's how you gotta say it? No, I'm saying, no, look, not because it's you, JD, but it's Janet Jackson. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? I would've said the same thing about me. They were together for almost seven years, and everything seemed peachy on the outside. But girl behind closed doors, woo, it was a different story. Rumors started flying that the whole Super Bowl Nipplegate wardrobe malfunction put a strain on their relationship, with Jermaine feeling overshadowed by the whole ordeal. Although, let's be real, Jermaine did stick with her through it all. In fact, after the infamous Nipplegate incident when Janet was harshly uninvited from that year's Grammy Awards, Jermaine resigned his position as president of the Academy's Atlanta chapter in a bid to show support for his girlfriend. Hmm, talk about being a green flag. But by 2009, it was all a wrap. They broke up and both sides moved on. Now let's talk about another woman in Jermaine's life who had everyone buzzing. Girl, this next one is like a soap opera with no commercial breaks. So the group Escape was signed to Jermaine's So So Deaf in the 90s. Hello, I'm Candy Burris and I'm 15 years old. Hi, I'm Tamika Scott and I'm 16 years old. Hello, I'm Latasha Scott and I'm 18 years old. The girl group consisted of Candy Burris, the two Scott sisters, Latasha and Tamika, and Tamara Coggins. And while Candy and Jermaine were getting cozy behind closed doors, we wouldn't even hear about it until the band broke up. When people found out that you guys were dating, were they upset or did you allow yourself like, damn, how did I manage to get... That is the funny thing. People did not know. Oh. It was not like we were openly oh. okay. kicking it. Right. Now sit tight, because here's where it gets crazy. So when the band broke up, Jermaine supposedly blamed one of the Scott sisters, Latasha. He claimed her pride and need to be in charge was the reason the band broke up. Escape came to me, they were singing songs that involved everyone. The way I was writing the songs was pulling the group apart because Candy started looking like the leader to y'all, but Tasha was back here like, I'm the leader. You know, and in groups, that's that's a problem. So anyway, what, what happened was, at that time, Jermaine had just put out a book. And in the book, he barely talked about her group. He don't really say that much of us. But I think in there, he said something about her sister getting the big head or something. Right. And that's why the group basically defeated themselves. Right. But girl, when I say Tamika wasn't having it, she went all out. First, she alleged that the reason the band broke up was because Candy was sleeping with Jermaine. But trust me, that's not even the juiciest part. Tamika went as far as claiming that Candy slept with Jermaine's dad. The part that I felt like for a long time wasn't clear and people try to run with, she was like, oh, Candy was having sex with Jermaine and, and she tried to make it seem like that was that the was reason it. why the group broke, broke up. up. And that was oh, not, man. that was the first thing. And then the other thing was- Y'all still friends? Yeah, well, we I stopped talking to her for a decade, but we're friends. Okay, again. okay. We're friends again. But anyway, but then the other part was that she added to it was she tried to say, yeah, and she screwed his daddy or something like that. That was way over the top. Right. Finally, in 2023, Candy spoke out on the issue, revealing that although she and Jermaine were hooking up at some point, she for sure never slept with his dad. 
She also refuted the other rumors going around that she slept with him to get favors. According to her, Escape had recorded albums with the record label before the whole fling even started. But no, 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 no. Actually, we had um, we had completed two full albums before we ever crossed that line. Okay. So I know it's like been put out there like so many different rumors. It wasn't like it was something that happened in the beginning. You know how you could be working with yeah, somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. and over time, time flirtation, yes, you know, yes, things yes. happen or whatever. <laughs> So it wasn't like, you know, we were, honestly, I felt like when you, people want to say like, oh, there was favoritism, there was no favoritism. Finally, let's talk about the one problem almost every celebrity can relate to, financial issues. At one point, between trying to stay afloat, work, and all the tabloid drama, it seemed like most celebrities subconsciously stopped keeping track of their finances. I mean, what can I say? I guess when you have too much cash in the bank, it just becomes too much to keep tabs on. Anyway, word on the street was that Jermaine was in some serious financial trouble. And girl, it wasn't just rumors. In 2013, his Atlanta mansion went into foreclosure. Yes, foreclosure. The same guy who helped create millionaires lost his home because he couldn't keep up with the mortgage payments. And to make it worse, the IRS came knocking too. They were chasing him for millions in unpaid taxes. I mean, how does someone go from being at the top of the game to dodging the IRS? Ugh, I guess with Jermaine, the drama is always on a roll. Despite the messy controversies and crazy headlines, what's Jermaine up to these days? Well, believe it or not, the man is still grinding. In 2019, he was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, which, let's be real, is a huge deal. I mean, love him or hate him, we can't deny that he has contributed so much to the music industry. And as for what he will be remembered for, for now, since all we've got is speculations about his shady business, Jermaine still stands tall as a music icon. And let's be real, he'll probably stay that way, unless something wild drops in the future. And finally, as for his net worth, according to Google, Jermaine's worth around $2 million. Not bad, I guess. But hey, the host of this interview did find it hilarious that anyone would think one of the biggest influences in pop is worth a mere $2 million. I looked up your celebrity net worth, and it says $2 million. <laughs> I find it very hard to believe. I don't know if you could believe anything about Jermaine Dupri that's on the internet. I told you that when I first came in. Maybe you add uh, two zeros to that, you're probably more in the ballpark. But my question to this is that as someone who is worth tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars, it seems like you're not slowing down.